All right, welcome back to Pharmacist On Call. Your host, Dr. Sean Pruitt, Community Pharmacist of the World. So actually, we have a question here from a Facebook viewer, uh, Miss Mary Leonard, chiming in on the Pharmacist On Call Facebook page, which you all can watch from there as well. Uh, and she has a question pretty much, she's in the donut hole, and the co-pays on her medication have gone from very little to quite a bit. And so I'm sure that many of you who happen to have Medicare are going through this situation uh, because these are you know brand name drugs there isn't too much uh, that we can do uh, with that you're gonna have to spend your amount and and until the insurance company sees that then your percentage will go back down to whatever your normal co-pays are uh, but you have to do a spin down uh, and put and I guess it's almost cost sharing is what it, it basically is uh, so Miss Leonard uh, in terms of the uh, the medication that you mentioned uh, because of the cost of it, it would be really hard to discount that on our end just because it's so high for us to even get. The copay that you mentioned is still cheaper than it costs for me to buy it. So they're just, it looks like they probably have you paying 80% of, of the price of the drug versus when you were paying normally like, you know, 5, 10, 20% uh, with a smaller copay. Uh, so now in terms of the other two drugs, the Lantus and the Humalog, Give me a call at the pharmacy because uh, those do have generic alternatives and perhaps we can do something about those. Uh, they don't have to necessarily be dispensers brand, but give me a call at the uh, at the pharmacy. All right, looks like we got one more call here. Pharmacist don't call, let me help you. Hello. Yes, sir. How can we help you? Yes, sir. I was calling in uh I was uh, listening to you talk about the uh, the beef root juice. Yes, sir. And uh, I just wanted to know is that is that any is that different juice from any juice that you buy in the uh, in the store? Maybe beet juice is that a different product? It, it is, yes, sir. So beet juice okay. probably in the store is just going to be straight beet root beet juice. This contains okay. the beet and its root. Oh, I see. Yes, ma'am. Because I because I have uh, yes, hypertension sir. and uh, I uh, I'm on uh, amlodipine and hydrocortisone and I was just wondering if that uh, does it make sense to to do the root juice? Okay, so what is your blood pressure running? You know what? Uh, lately, since I've been on the meds, it's been uh, fairly decent. One twenty five over. 80, 87, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fairly decent. In fact, you can add the beetroot juice to that and just okay. get your numbers down a little bit lower. Now, are you diabetic okay. as well? No, no, I'm not diabetic. It's funny because uh, hypertension actually run through, uh, it ran on my dad's side. I don't drink, don't smoke. I never did anything in that matter. I'm, I'm very physical. And yet, I still had hypertension, and so they put me on the meds, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get off of the medication. To be honest with you, well, this is going to be a good start here. Now, are are you suffering from chronic pain? No. Okay, you a guy who likes a lot of salt in his food. I, I I've taken out all the salt in my food, actually. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, how much water do you drink a day? Man, I'm I'm telling you, I'm pumping water like. I mean, I drink plenty of water, I really do. Okay, okay. You ever notice that you start to cramp up? Uh, I can't say I have. Maybe okay. sometimes, well, you know what, once or twice I have, I can say. Okay, all right. Yeah, I would, uh, if you're looking to get off, uh, but let that be your doctor's decision. But what right. we could do, we can add this on there, and when you go see your doctor, that your pressure gets down so low that he says, you know what? Maybe we can reduce the dose or take away one of the meds, and okay. then reduce the dose and take away the other med. Okay. You follow me? Yeah. So let's let's try that if that's what you're wanting to do, and if it controls your pressure uh, as equally as the amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide do, then there you have it. Here's your solution. Okay. Now what? Now where do I get that? At uh, Pruitt's Discount Pharmacy. Are you in the Nashville area? I am. Okay, so at the end of the show, the producer is going to flash my address. So make sure you're paying attention so that you can see where we are and you can stop in and get a bottle of beetroot juice. Okay. All right. 
Thank you so much, Doctor. I appreciate you, man. I enjoy listening to your show, man. Well, hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for calling because you all add to the content of the show. If I don't get good questions, uh, then I don't give good answers. And so I love it when y'all call in with the questions because people are learning from what I'm telling you. They had the same questions you did. You just had the courage to call. I got you. Yes, thank sir. you so much, sir. Yes, appreciate sir. you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Judy, welcome to Pharmacist Don't Call. May I help you? Hi, Dr. Pruitt. Yes, ma'am. Seeing that, seeing that your conversation has been on hair, can you tell me if there is anything to help with the side effects of hair loss from the prescription of the blood pressure medication, Losartan, or hydrazoline? Hydrazine. Um, and so what the uh, Judy is talking about is uh, alopecia that, and there are drugs that cause this. Uh, short of getting off of the drugs and replacing them with something else that won't take your hair out, you know, then we could go that route. But like the other lady, I would suggest supplementing with uh, biotin, 10,000 units a day. Um, I'm sorry, four 10,000 unit capsules per day, and then the hair, skin, and nail vitamins that we sell in the pharmacy. I've been also taking zinc. Zinc also is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. But biotin, I, I would start there with any kind of hair regimen. Okay. I was hoping you had. I was hoping you had more because this has really gotten to be a bad thing. All of a sudden, I used to have so much hair, and now all of a sudden, I have none. All right. So, well, I mean, let's look at just getting you off the Losartan. Let's get rid of the calls. Well, I have gotten off Losartan. She started me just recently on this hydrozoline, but I noticed the side effects are hair loss on hydrozoline also. Ask your doctor if she thinks that you would be a decent candidate for spironolactone. And that, that. Uh, S P I S P I R O R O N O N O L A C L A C T O N E T O N E. Yeah. You know, she blames everything on hormones and old age. Oh, uh, your doctor? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I would say that your thyroid may play a role or your yes. uh, estrogen hormones may play a role, but I'm sorry, if the data is there that the drug causes it, then that's your most likely cause. Now, did she yeah. draw blood levels to show that estrogen yeah. was kind of out of whack and thyroid levels were out of whack? Yes, but she never gives me any uh, results. Okay. So then let's, uh, oh, she doesn't tell you what's going on with them then? No, she never says much about that. And she tells me like before when I wanted to get my results and my numbers for my uh, um, vitamin D3, she said if I needed any of that information, it would probably cost me extra because I'm, I'm also on Medicare and a supplement insurance. All right, so maybe we'll, we'll try to uh, look for another doctor too. Uh, do, oh. do, you have a history of, <laughs> do you have a history of thyroid issues? No. Okay. I, I, I think it's the drugs, ma'am. So. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure it's the drugs, too. That's why I've been supplementing mostly, like, with, uh, with zinc and just natural uh, nutrients. And then when I hear all these people calling tonight about their alopecia, mm -hmm. I thought this might be a good time to ask this question, too, about this uh, blood pressure medication because I have several friends that are going through the same problem. So ask your doctor if spironolactone, if she thinks she'd be a good candidate for the side effect of spironolactone is something called hirsutism, which means it causes hair growth. Uh, so yeah. it'll probably reverse what you're going through there. See if she thinks that would be a good option for you to add to your blood pressure regimen. Well, I can check, but she's not too hip on this, anything that's natural. You know how some of these doctors are. If it's, if well, it's not a drug, they don't want to have anything to do with it. Spironolactone is a prescription drug, so she should be happy. Oh, well, thank you so very yes, much. Yes, ma'am. I thank you for your help. Okay, all right, you're welcome. And then report back, uh, call us in subsequent shows, and kind of let us know how that discussion goes. And if she does put you on spur on a light tone, how much it helped you. Oh, I'm very appreciative. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, bye-bye. Man, y'all are coming with that questions tonight. Let's see here. Pharmacist, don't call. Let me help you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How can we help you? Hi, uh, Mr. Steve. I wanted to find out if there's any kind of natural medicine that's not prescription that uh, 
just help you with uh, craving sweets so much. Mm, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I probably need to take some of that myself. How much do you eat, Judy? <laughs> Well, too many. I can, you know, be full and, and and still I have a craving for sweets a lot. And I just wonder if there's anything that would offset that, any kind of vitamin or mineral or anything. Actually, eating a high-protein diet uh, would help that. Do you much of a meat eater? Uh, just moderate, right? Okay. Just have a hip mower. Yeah, and you would still have sugar cravings after eating meat? Uh, well, yeah, I do, but sometimes I try fruit, but they just don't get it. Understood, understood. How often do you eat daily? Um, usually two or three times. But then uh, it's my meals and I want to sleep. Okay. Well, then I think what you were trying to do supplement with fruit is a good idea. Now, sometimes what happens is our body wants sugar, like if we're really hungry, because that's the quickest source of glucose that we can get, and that's what our brain feeds off of, which is sugar in the form of glucose. And so it doesn't necessarily want to wait for a steak or a juicy burger. It knows that eating that sweet will get it what it needs uh, much quicker. So that's why I suggest a high-protein diet and probably some vegetables in there, too, to give the body kind of what it needs in terms of uh, vitamins and minerals. Uh, and protein, and that sugar craving should kind of go to go away. Yeah, are you a big vegetable eater too? Uh, just average. Okay. Sounds like you may need to add a, a maybe a much smaller meal in there as a snack to keep you from wanting the sugar. And just eat a little more protein and less carbohydrates, maybe. Well, maybe an uh, maybe an extra meal, an extra smaller meal. Okay, just mm -hmm. write it up into uh, extra meal. Uh-huh, four instead meal. of three meals. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll try that then. Report back, okay. let me know how that works. <laughs> All right, Judy? I thank you, and I'll try that. Okay, yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. So I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, Miss Judy. Uh-huh, bye. bye. All righty, bye-bye. Okay, all right, so some very interesting questions here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about some supplements, y'all. Mother's Day is coming up. So happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. So we want to talk about a couple of things that mama might need uh, as gifts. I'm sure she is tired of, well, she's probably not tired of it, but I'm sure that she would maybe like something else besides a plant or some flowers. She would like something to, uh, we're going to get into it here, but we got a call here. Shirley, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. May I help you? Oh, Shirley? Uh, yes, this is Shirley Young. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I hope I am anyway. But I have like a two or three part question. Okay. Uh, I am taking amlodipine, hydroxyline, and carbidolol mm -hmm. uh, for my blood pressure, and I'm still having problems with it. They have increased the carbidolol, doubled it to 6.25, and hydrolyzine to... Um, 50 milligrams three times a day and the carbidol twice a day. And would beetroot juice be an addition I could add to that or, or not? Yes, ma'am, it would be. Now, let's talk about why it's going up. Are you in chronic pain? Am I in chronic pain? Uh huh, you're a chronic no. pain patient? Okay. Are we adding a little more Lowry seasoning salt to our food? Uh, no, I try to watch my sodium. Okay, you eat a lot of processed food. Sometimes it comes pre-packaged with sodium. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, but yeah, beetroot juice would be a great uh, addition to your regimen. And what we're hopeful of, as I told the gentleman before, is that once your doctor sees your numbers start to come down, then they're going to reduce or eliminate some of your medications. So I would mm -hmm. shake it up real good. One cap full in the morning on an empty stomach, uh, and then you can start taking your, your breakfast or your morning meds about 30 minutes to an hour after you've had this. Okay, you said one cap full on, on the morning uh, on an empty stomach. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what I said. So this cap full, shake it up, screw it off, and pour it in there. And this one cap full mm -hmm. is about uh, a tablespoon, two tablespoonfuls, or one ounce. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
And then, did you say uh, on your program that hydrolazine causes, causes hair loss? Well, I know hydrochlorothiazide does. I'm not sure about hydrolazine, uh, so I'll have to look that up. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah I think and the lady I mentioned it did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Also, uh, and a lot of people in Aspril, I was on that for several years, and then they started changing my medicine, mm -hmm. and I've had a lot of trouble since then. But does that cause kidney, uh, lower your kidney function? And lot of pain, or anything that you know of? Well, no, but they actually added it to help protect your kidney function. So the ACE inhibitor class of drugs, Cinepril, Benazapril, uh, all of those prills, they help preserve mm -hmm. your kidney function. They help preserve it? Yes, well, mm -hmm. it's the opposite of what they told me then. They, they told okay. you that it was going to... Well, they thought that that was going against my kidney function, and that's when they took me off of it, and, and that was helping me a lot more than what these medicines they're putting me on now. Okay. Did so they, I didn't know. Did they mention something about your serum creatinine or your BUN being off? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, you know, sometimes, no, no, the main thing they told me was about my kidney function. Is this the same doctor and, that, that you had when you were on amlodipine? Benazapril is the same one you have well, now? Well, the, the doctor that I'm going to now did not originally prescribe the amlodipine benazapril. I started going to him after I had, I mean, whenever I was taking that, and that's when he noticed my kidney function was getting, was kind of low, and he thought that that was because of the benazapril, and he took me out in that combination, he put me on just plain amlodipine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would think benazapril would actually help with your preserve your kidney function, and that's usually why we that's usually why we place patients on ACE inhibitors, especially uh, patients who are diabetic, because the kidneys can decline in hypertension and diabetes, and we want to kind of preserve yeah. that kidney function there. It may be worth having a second conversation with them and just say, hey, I talked to my pharmacist, and he said the benazapril uh, might actually help my kidneys. Is it possible that we could maybe look at adding it back on? I'd probably come to them like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So one other question, quick, please. Is there anything any better than melatonin to try to help you sleep? Uh, the cocktail that I use is melatonin, 10 milligram tablets, and a dropper full of CBD. And I'm out like a light. 10, milligram, 10 milligrams on the melatonin and, and what on CBD? Uh, ten, uh, just one dropper full up under the tongue. Let it sit there for 30 seconds. And, uh, yeah, I'm out like a light. <laughs> okay, then. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you for the good questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We got a couple of questions, but you all stay right there. We'll be right back.